This is Ben Summer. I own and operate bands like Rush.com, a music discovery podcast and blog featuring up and coming progressive rock bands. Enjoy this video edition of the podcast and check out my own music. Uh, visit my website at bensummer.com. If you sign up for the email list, you'll get three free downloads. <laughs> Hi, this is Ben Summer with BandsLikeRush.com. Uh, I'm here with Gail Ellett uh, from the uh, band. Oh, geez, you got to help me with this. I, I looked at Jean, the, I, I pronounce it Jean Carré. Got it. Uh, you know, I saw the phonetic spelling in your uh, Wikipedia entry, and I uh, Jean Carré. Okay, got it. Great. Great. Anyway, uh, uh, Gail is uh, kind of a uh, um, uh, impresario of this of this long running prog band uh, that's been around for uh, quite some time, and uh, uh, excited to talk to him for a few minutes uh, for the site. Gail, why don't you just, you know, for, for those uh, fools who have never heard of your band or yourself, why don't you give uh, give us just a brief intro of what you're about, what, what the band sure. hit band about. And, uh, and, and intro. Sure. Um, our uh, group, Jean Carré, was formed about 26 years ago in 1984. And uh, we have 15 CDs out so far. And we're, we sort of play progressive music. We play such a... Um, a blended style, and uh, so sometimes our music's rather jazzy or metal or electronic and pulls from different veins. In the first few years, all we did was totally improvised music uh, with no pre-planned structure in any of our rehearsals or gigs, and we did that for years, and then slowly started adding more structure. And as you can tell from listening to our music, we have a big focus on trying to make the ensemble sound and not be just a setup for individual people to rip solos over. And uh, we just are inspired by the music of our teenage years that we listen to, but we don't want to, you know, be copies of them. But we're obviously influenced by Pink Floyd and King Crimson and also rock groups like the Allman Brothers and Skinner and jazz fusion groups like Mahavishnu Orchestra and, and electronic music, Tangerine Dream and Pink Floyd and all that. So that's kind of what we've done. Yeah, uh, d definitely. The, when you when you said the word ensemble, I hear it for sure. And uh and some of the reviews I've read have, have uh, particularly praised the ensemble sound. And it really, in my ears, it sounds, uh, I confirm with my ears that it sounds like you record everything live as a, as a group, even in the studio. Is that true? Only on our newest record, uh, the Heavy Soul Sessions, did we record <clears throat> everything live in the studio. All, almost tons of tons of our albums before are really all done one track at a time, the drums first and then other instruments, but we're, we do it so much, and we do it, I hope, well, that it sounds very much like we're all playing together, but it's almost always one track at a time, even though it hopefully doesn't come across that way. Wow. No, it doesn't at all. Um, yeah, I, mean, I was listening to some, maybe some older stuff, uh, real older stuff with um, on your site, uh, uh, where the production values you know, were a lot were a lot rawer. And right. It sounded it sound, you know, sound like everyone was uh, locked in, but not to a metronome. Do you? Do, how does it work? Does, uh, does the we, we never use a metronome. We never use a metronome, but we we'll usually record the drums first. And what we'll do is everyone in the room will play our instruments into without playing into amps, though, just into headphones, so that the drummer can hear us playing along with him, but no sound bleeds into his drums. Right. And what we record is just a scratch track of all of us with crappy tone and no amps, just plugged into, blended together onto another track. So then. After that, and the drummer's free to speed up or slow down over time. You know, we don't care about <clears throat> the beats per minute creeping up a little faster over over time. You know, we don't. That's just of no concern. We're trying to have a played by hand kind of feel and not an overly technical feel. Yeah. No. Well, that, that's that's. Uh, if you were to simulate a live band recorded sound, that would be the way to do it. To uh, absolutely, and I think it makes a lot. Of, I think in the future we're going to try to do more bass, drums, and maybe guitar at the same time because it did work out really well on our most recent CD to all play at the same time, and we ended up doing no overdubs on our on this particular record, but it's nice to do overdubs, and since I play guitar and keyboards, I can't play them both at the same time, obviously. <laughs> right, yeah, that's always a trick. <laughs> yeah. Um, you were, uh, so when you were throwing out some similarity, uh, your influences, you threw out some names which were telling, um... Uh, the one thing, and, and uh, uh, the the, the non-Western element uh, that I hear in a lot of the music, and this is this is quoted in a lot of the reviews, uh, things like, um, well, yeah, I don't hear a lot of odd meters, which sometimes you hear in, in certain non-Western folk music, but 
you know, the non-Western modes, you, you, you use a lot of different types of scales. Where does that come from? Yeah. Um, we do play a lot in 7-4 and other rhythms, but we play them sometimes so fluidly that it doesn't sound like they're odd rhythms. But our one of our bass players, Aaron, writes modally a lot um, in the other modes besides the major Ionian and Aeolian uh, modes that normal Western music is in. But I also write a lot of uh, traditional world music for my day job, which is to do music for TV shows and film projects. And so in that way, I've spent a couple of decades studying a ton of world music as part of my main job of writing music at home for that project, that kind of thing. And also the rest of the people in the band listen to a lot of traditional folk CDs from around the world in general because we like listening to Balinese music and, you know, South American music and Eastern European music. So just because we're fans of that stuff, it creeps in and influences our our style somewhat. Right, right. Uh, I When I said odd meters, I, I do hear odd meters, but it's not math rock where you're switching around and being all avant-garde about it. It's it, it, uh, There are a lot of non-Western musics that have odd meters but stick to them, and so they're they're just kind of like part of the dance dance sequence, if you will. That's what I well, heard. We're trying, we're, you know, in many ways, we're trying hard to make music that, on the one hand, is fairly complicated or very complicated, but on the other hand, is still flowing and grooving. And so we're trying to not be not get that effect of that math rock thing where it's just tedious. We're trying to balance flow with complexity and um, simple with complex parts and soloing with melody and juggle all those things and keep them kind of under control, but all still really vibrant at the same time. Right. So you're uh, interesting. I want to hear about your...